Hello friends, greetings in Jesus. In our November video, we discussed the necessity of the Passion. That is to say, the necessity of God himself and the person of Jesus Christ experiencing a lack of faith as he hung from the cross, and using that experience of the cross to justify his forgiveness of the sins of the penitent. In reflecting on this necessity of the Passion, I was heartened to find this scripture from Luke chapter 24, verses 26 and 27. It is about the risen Christ, who comes upon two of his followers on the road to Emmaus. They did not recognize him. Jesus says to them, Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So yes, friends, the passion was a necessity to our Lord. Through it, his grace is justified. Yea, it is the most important event of human history. And of course, we receive comfort in our suffering, knowing that Jesus also suffered. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who is 100% God and 100% man, identifies with our human suffering, our suffering of physical pain and injustice. Oh, how much he must love us. Looking forward, we are told in Acts 17, In the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. We are also told, uh, or I should say, we are told the same thing in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Still, let us also remember that the gospel tells us the following in Matthew chapter 24, verses 11 and 12. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because wickedness is multiplied, most men's love will grow cold. That is one of many such warnings in the gospel. Be careful, friends, and let no one deceive you. Be aware of anyone who predicts dates, months, years, as though they know these things with confidence. When you hear that this or that will happen in this month or that date, it is a red flag. Avoid this type of talk. Jesus warned four times about deception in the church. We must be vigilant and on guard against wolves in sheep's clothing. We do not know when the ultimate false prophet and man of lawlessness will make their public appearances, nor do we know when the mark of the beast will be foisted upon the world. It could be in three months, in three years, or twelve years. What I do believe is this. Taking the mark of the beast is, in and of itself, a rejection of the Holy Spirit. Again I say, taking the mark of the beast is, in and of itself, a rejection of the Holy Spirit. It is that point that I suggest we all contemplate. Please pray the Lord's Prayer, and of course all the Psalms are good to recite. If you're a new believer, I want to suggest you do as I do, which is to recite the 4th, 23rd, 34th, 40th, 51st, and 91st Psalms, or at least some combination of them, perhaps two or three, on a daily basis. That's 4, 23, 34, 40, 51, and 91. Let us continue to praise the Lord at all times. In the name of Jesus, God bless you, friends.